I used about three pounds of clay. So I'm going to start working on getting this centered. So I'm going to start to flatten this out and make a really big pancake. I'm going to drive this clay out more. All right. So this is pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and open this inside. <clears throat> I'm going to take it all the way down to the wheel. Well, I have it on a bat so that I can shape it once I have my walls built. So ideally what you want to think about when you're setting this wall up, um, I think about a pair of bookends. And you really want that inside line and that outside line. Outside line's more for just stability, but the inside curve really, um, if you, depending on how you want to use your ring, if you want to push the clay all the way down to the bottom, it's really nice to have that little shape there. And so now I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this wall up a little bit. And I want to make sure that as I'm pulling this that I'm allowing the wall to open up more to the outside because I want to allow space for the clay to drape inside. I don't want it to get stuck. And I like to leave my molds a little thicker because I want them to last. And they get used a lot in the studio, so I want them to withstand any kind of bumps that they may take on. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> I'm use my fancy chamois here. I often use this for cups and bowls and finishing off the top of things, making it look nice and tidy. All right, I'm going to use this wooden tool here to clean up this inside and just kind of define that shape in there. I'll get the outside to help get my wire tool underneath. You also can go in with a rib if you want and you know open this up a little bit more. Then I'm going to take my wire tool and go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to clean my hands off, get some of the slip slurry off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. So I can pull it. I like to pull it away from me. <clears throat> I don't like to work it in front of me. I feel like I have a lot more success doing it this way. So any shape can happen at this point. I have a variety of shapes that I work with. I'll make a clover. You can make squares. You can make any kind of asymmetrical shape that you're thinking about. And then I may go and just kind of do this. And then I'm going to let this sit up and go ahead and let it get bisque fired and then I'll start my next step. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use the bisque mold to drape your clay in here. So I've already pre-rolled out a slab and I'm going to just start to drape it in here. So I know I already have too much going on here and that's okay. I'm just going to start to cut a little bit away before I start to pooch the clay down into the shape. So what I'm going to do is take this tool, a bag of sand, and a plastic bag with a sock. It's really important to make sure that plastic bag is there, otherwise you're just going to have sand coming out everywhere. So I start typically around the rim, and I'll start to pooch this into shape. Okay, so I don't want this to slump all the way down so that it's touching, so I can check that. I can pick it up. I'm good to go. I haven't hit the bottom. But you may opt to hit the bottom and just go ahead and make a bottom on this. And that's totally fine. It's up to you. You get to do what you want. You're the artist. So now I'm going to lay this down so I can get ready to cut it. I'm going to use my Dolan knife that I love so much. And I'm going to find the outside of this shape and start to cut away. Now you want to be really careful about not cutting away too much. I've done that before. I've cut too much away and then the piece starts to slump inside and then I've lost it and I have to start over. So you want to be aware of that. So like I said, this works in stages. So what I'm going to do now is cover it, let it sit up, and get ready for that next stage. Mm -hmm.